Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Wake up! Good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on, share this with your friends. Invite your followers. We gotta get it cranked up. Come on, share, invite, let's get this cranked up. Wake up, people. Good morning, Pastor Cecil. Good morning. As a seal. As a seal. Starting in 30 seconds. Share, invite. Hello, Whitney. Hello, Scott and Robin. Dawson, Georgia. Good morning. Hello, Kimberly. Karabashakata. London, 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 London.
Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, author of our devotional, Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. I'm the senior leader of the Awakening House of Prayer in South Florida, the epicenter for church life, training, family. You got it. Today's devotional title, Don't Worry About Tomorrow. You could just stop right there, meditate on that the rest of your life, and maybe break free. Amen. So many people worrying. Don't worry about tomorrow. Come on, gift of faith. Don't worry about tomorrow. Here's what I heard the Lord say. You are going to be okay. I know sometimes you get anxious about what the future holds, but you don't have to worry because Father holds your future in His hands. And His thoughts towards you are good. Rest assured that He plans to prosper you and not to harm you. He plans to give you a hope and a future in His kingdom that is far above anything you can even dream. So don't worry about tomorrow, says the Spirit of grace. Our grace is sufficient. Amen. God is good. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, Proverbs 12, 25, and Jeremiah 17, verses 7 through 8 are the scripture references for today. And the prayer starter, I believe you. <laughs> you are good. I cast my burdens, fears, worries, anxieties about you, about the future on you. I commit to thinking hopeful thoughts about the future you have in store for me. Please give me the grace to walk in confidence in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, God. We thank you this morning for your grace and your goodness, God. We love you, Lord, because you are good. You are love. You are the embodiment, the epitome of wisdom and love and generosity. You're a generous God. Father, we're so grateful that you're generous. You're not stingy. When we ask for wisdom, you pour it out upon us liberally because you've got all the wisdom in the world. You don't have to go hunt for it. You don't have to go search for it. You don't have to go pray for it. You don't have to find wisdom in any other source. You are wisdom. Wisdom was with you when you founded the earth, my God. Wisdom. You're generous with it, God. You're generous with your provision. You're not broke, busted, and disgusted. You don't lack a thing. The silver is yours. The gold is yours. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. You are good. You are a provider. <laughs> You're a generous provider. My God, I can't get off that. You're not stingy. You don't hold things back. You don't dangle a carrot in front of our face saying, if you'll just perform and jump through these hoops and get all this done, then I'll give you a raise. You don't act like our natural employers. <laughs> you don't act like our bosses at work promising promotion, promising increase, and then jerking it back and giving it to somebody else. You've got enough for everybody. God, help us today. God, help me. God, help us today to step into an abundance mindset instead of a lack mindset. Understanding and knowing that there are enough resources for everybody in the world. There's no reason why children should be starving. There's enough for everyone. You do not lack a thing. You're not a skimpy. You're generous. You're not stingy. You've got the overflow. God, help us to shift our minds. Come on now. You said this will change your life if you'll, if you'll, if you'll get in agreement. Help us to shift our minds, not to be poor stewards and waste money, waste resources, waste time, but to understand the God of abundance, to, to, to see you as the God of abundance, not the God who, you know, if so-and-so gets the promotion, well, we're just left behind. If so-and-so gets the fur coat, well, we just don't have a chance. If so-and-so gets a breakthrough, a check in the mail, a surprise check in the mail, come on, Tanya, a surprise check in the mail, that means you won't get your windfall. That is not how the kingdom works. There is an abundance in the earth. Help us, Lord. I'm not going to leave off this point till you get it. Or at least till five of you get it. The rest of you can catch up later, listen to the replay. But we're going to have to press this one more moment. God is a God of abundance. If he doesn't have it, he'll make it for you. Ah! If he doesn't have it, he will create it. He is creator God. If he doesn't have it, he will make it for you. He doesn't have to sit up and bite his finger saying, Oh my gosh, how am I going to get Sally's bills paid? But our minds don't see him that way. Our minds see the rat race and we become like rats. 
Our minds see the uh, the bank account and we become enamored by Babylonian structures and systems that don't leave room for God's miraculous working power. God help me. Help us, Lord, to shift our minds from a lack mindset to an abundance mindset, knowing that the more we give, the more we're going to receive. That's why, that is why Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than receive. You have the joy of giving, and it comes back around to you anyway. You don't lose a thing. You never lose a thing. You never lose a thing in God's kingdom when you give it away. You want to lose it when the devil takes it. And the devil can't take your stuff when you're giving it away. The Lord says, test me in this. In what? In tithes and offerings. To see and just see. Test me in this and see if I will not pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Oh, so many Christians holding on so tightly with a tight grip on that $5 bill. Don't want to put it in the offering. And then the enemy comes and, 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 and somebody slashes your tires or your refrigerator breaks. Oh, I better get off this. Somebody's getting offended. Well, you know what? I, I you know, <laughs> maybe your offense will get you out of that poverty. Maybe your offense will get you out of that lack mentality. Shake it up. The devil wants to keep you in bondage thinking there's not enough. There's enough for you. There's enough for me. There's enough for the whole wide world. God is creator. The silver is his. The gold is his. The earth thereof, the earth and the fullness thereof, it all belongs to him. Do you think that he doesn't have enough supply? Dear God. Father, help us today. Help us today to see you as the God of abundance. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give into our bosoms? Father, we give you praise today as our, as our provider. You are an all-sufficient God. You don't have to worry and wonder where your next meal is coming from, so we don't have to worry and wonder where our next meal is coming from. If we ask you for a loaf of bread, are you going to give us a snake? No. Are you going to ignore us? No. God, help us, Lord, to extend our faith into the realm of provision. Some of you, so you think you have to fight the devil for your provision. No, you have to fight your own mindsets. I don't know why I'm on this. This must be a break free call. Some of you think you have to fight the devil for your provision. You need to fight your own mindsets. You need to fight your own ah, unbelief. You need to fight your own fear. You need to fight your own doubt. You need to fight your own reasoning. You need to fight your own perception. You need to fight your own wrong teachings about money because your daddy or your mama told you money don't grow on trees. Instilled in you this lack mentality. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break every lack mentality in the name of the Lord. We shall not look through the lens of lack, but we shall look through the lens of abundance and we shall be good stewards of that which you put in our hand. We're not going to be wasteful. We're not going to be wasteful. We're not going to be wasteful. Just because there's an abundance doesn't mean we need to be wasteful. Jesus told the disciples to hand out the loaves and fishes. And when they were done eating, there were leftovers. And God told them, get the baskets and pick up the leftovers. God never wastes a thing. He doesn't waste our pain. He doesn't waste our time. He doesn't waste our finances and neither should we, but we must break through this lack attack on our lives in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Help us change our perceptions. God help us change our perceptions. God help us change our perceptions. God in the name of Jesus, we're not going to be a slave to mammon. Mammon works for us. Come on. You've heard it all before. I want you to press into this in these 40 days. We're going to pray into this some more, maybe tomorrow or the next day. I'm going to get some more revelation on this, but there's, there's something to it. I'm telling you, you need to break free. You need to break free. Go wake up your husband and say, you need to break free. Go get your kids up and get them their cereal and say, you need to break free. Come on. I'm telling you, there's something to it. We're going to press into this more. I'm going to press into the Lord and get a, a true uh, a word beyond, beyond this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for more revelation. 
In the name of the Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Help us to renew our minds, to stop worrying about money in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you today that there are weapons in the floodgates. Weapons in the floodgates. There's weapons in the floodgates. There's weapons in the floodgates. There's weapons in the floodgates. Day 15 of 40. There are weapons in the floodgates. Day 15 of 40. There are weapons in the floodgates. Father, I thank you that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God. I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to get in the flesh to war for that which you've ordained for us to have. I thank you, Lord, that we don't have to wonder if we're going to win the war. Because when we pick up your weapons and when you lead us into battle, we always walk into triumph in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for the weapons in the floodgates. I just see that, Lord. I see some of you are trying to swing with a dull sword. Some of you are trying to fight the battle with a dull sword. You're trying to fight it. You know, I was there in Louisiana and I, and I, and I had a sword and I was dubbing people and giving them, you know, it was a prophetic act. That sword wasn't sharp. It wasn't a real sword. It was heavy like a real sword, but it wasn't sharp like a real sword. Some of you, your, your swords are not sharpened. Father, the name of Jesus, help us to press into your presence and sharpen our swords in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Help us to press into your press. Some of you don't need a new sword. You just need to sharpen the one you have. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sometimes God will give you a new sword. Spiritually speaking, prophetically speaking, sometimes he'll give you a new sword. It's a bigger sword. It's a mightier sword. It's a sword with more authority. It comes with promotions. But sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you just need to sharpen the sword that you have. So Father, in the name of Jesus, if our swords have grown dull because we've not meditated in your word, if our swords have grown dull because we've not sat in your presence, if our swords have grown dull because we We've not pressed into study and understand the revelation that you laid out for us in this season to defeat the enemy. If our swords have grown dull, God, help us to press into you. Give us the grace to keep pushing. Give us the grace to keep, uh, uh, keep pursuing your heart for the revelation that will take out the enemy in Jesus name. I thank you, Lord. There's weapons. There's weapons. There's weapons. There's weapons in the floodgates. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that one of the greatest weapons is revelation. One of the greatest ways to defeat the enemy is by revelation. Revelation of who you are. Revelation of what he's up to. Revelation of the seed that he sowed in our hearts sometimes when we were two, three, four years old. When we can see the work of the enemy, we can overcome the work of the enemy. As they say in Nicaragua, a devil exposed is a devil defeated father exposed by revelation the enemy that is at work in our soul exposed by revelation the enemy that is at work in our soul that we might pick up the sword the sword that we sharpen by study the sword that we sharpen by pressing into your presence that sword that we sharpen by being committed to put in the work to see the results that we want to have God help us Lord to press in to see the work of the enemy in the life lives of ourselves and our children and our family and our nation there are weapons in the floodgate I see that Lord 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 I see just a like a treasure chest of weapons it's just like it but it's huge it's like it it's like you don't have to compete for it there's all kinds of weapons there's the weapon of love ah Some of y'all don't like that. You like to scream at the devil like me. You know what? Love is a weapon. Bible says, love your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you. If your enemy is is, is mean to you, be nice to them. Give them a drink of water. The, the, The Lord says, I'll rain down coals of fire on his head. You know what that is? Conviction. 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 When you when you operate in love, it becomes a weapon that releases coals of fire, coals of conviction, so that the other person can repent, so that you can see vindication, so that you can come on. There are weapons. There are weapons. There are weapons. There are weapons. There are weapons in the floodgates today. Peace is a weapon. I see, a, I see a picture of shoes, just like the ones you'd see on a Roman soldier. Shoes, but they're shoes of peace. Peace is a weapon. 
Some of you need to go pick up your shoes of peace. Some of you kicked them off. Some of you are running around barefoot. You're running around barefoot. Your shoes are not just part of your armor. They're part of your weaponry. You're running around barefoot. You're running around in some shoes that are falling apart and they're ragged. You need some new ones. The enemy has worn you out. The enemy has troubled your soul. Your shoes of peace, they're ragged. They've got holes in the bottom. The heel is coming off. The shoestrings are just ratty tat tat. You can't even touch them you're flip-flopping around in these nasty old shoes you need to kick those off and go in the floodgates and pick up your shoes of peace again peace is a weapon it's a weapon oh when the devil comes against you and you stay in peace oh he just doesn't know what to do with himself yes for some of you in this season faithfulness is your weapon Faithfulness is your weapon because the devil is trying to get you out of a certain position. He's trying to get you to move on when he's not told you to move on. The devil is trying to get you to move on when God's not told you to move on. And faithfulness is your weapon. Faithfulness because becomes a steadfast weapon on your behalf. Because you're saying, I am unmovable. I'm not going to leave this job that I've had for 12 years just because somebody else got the promotion. I'm not going to leave this job for 12 years just because a new coworker came in and they've got a Jezebel spirit. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay the course. I'm not going to leave this church huh, because I didn't get on the worship team and I'm offended and hurt. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave. I'm not going to leave unless God tells me to leave. Your faithfulness is a weapon. Your faithfulness becomes a weapon to you. Your determination becomes a weapon. Oh, There's all kinds of weapons. We don't see them as weapons, but they are because they invade the darkness. They push back the darkness. They disallow. They disallow the enemy to do what he wants to do. Love, peace faithfulness come on patience yeah I don't like that one patience is a weapon it's a weapon it's not just a fruit of the spirit beloved it's a weapon it's a weapon it's a weapon of your warfare it's a weapon you're gonna stand fast faith come on now faith and patience and by faith and patience, hey, by faith, come on, faith and patience, these are the one two punch against the enemy. By faith and patience, you're going to enter your promised land. Come on, by faith and patience, you're going to enter your promised land. Come on, there is warfare in the wilderness, but by faith and patience, you overcome the warfare in the wilderness. By faith and patience, you overcome, you endure, you keep pressing. By faith and patience, these are weapons. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. You're fighting for your faith. You're fighting to believe that what God told you could be, will be. Paul said, I believe it will be just as God told me it will be. The ship was falling apart. They were throwing the food, the provisions, and the cargo off the ship. The ship was about to break forth. And an angel came and told Paul, there will be no loss of lives, but only of the ship. He went back to the captain and said, it will be just as God told me it will be. And then Abraham called those things that were not as though they were. He called those things that be not as though they were. He walked in faith faith just became a weapon against doubt against unbelief faith became a weapon against fear faith became a weapon against everything ah it's a shield but it's also a weapon <laughs> it's a shield faith is a shield it quenches every fire dart of the enemy but it's also a weapon <laughs> I just saw you know you can take your shield of faith and swing it and knock the enemy right upside the head it's not just a defensive element. The Bible speaks of violent faith. This is the faith that overcomes the, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Father, help us to rise to that level of overcoming faith today. We use faith not just to receive, but to use faith to fight. Ah. To use faith, not just to receive, to, 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 to bring down the currency of the kingdom from the spiritual realm to the natural realm. Help us not, Lord, just to, just, to, just to just tap into faith to receive, but help us to tap into faith as a weapon to obliterate fear, 
to obliterate doubt, to obliterate unbelief, to obliterate those things that hinder love. Help us, Lord. Ah, see, y'all thought I was going to talk about bazookas in the floodgate and, and cannonballs in the floodgate. The kingdom is upside down. The kingdom is contrary to the ways of the world. The kingdom is full of mysteries. Love is a weapon. Come on. Peace is a weapon. Faithfulness is, there's weapons in the floodgates, but you've got to get in the head of the floodgates. Somebody said, what does that mean? What do you mean? I mean, get in the presence of God where the river of living water is flowing. He is opening the windows of heaven and pouring out blessings we cannot contain. You need to be near him. He is the one who's opening the floodgate. You need to get close to him. This is a metaphor. <laughs> when, they, when God told that, them that in, in Malachi, he, he didn't literally rain down money from the sky. <laughs> he did rain down manna and quail from the sky. So we see that God does rain down provision. But he was talking about, he was talking metaphorically. There are weapons in the floodgate. There are weapons in the floodgate. There are weapons. Lord, help us, Lord, to pick up the weapon that we need. Your weapon may look different than my weapon. Come on. If you're a foot soldier, if you're a hand-to-hand -hand combat person, you're going to have a little knife or a little, you know, a little gun. If you're a general, you're going to have different weapons. God, your weapons are customized for you and for your battle. You don't need to pick up somebody else's. That's why I see somebody on here, somebody on here, and, and, the, and, and, and your pastor or your friend, somebody, somebody, somebody is trying to tell you how to fight your battle. And you're, listen, listen to me. You're doing everything they say, and it's not working. And the reason why, the reason why it's not working, the reason why it's not working is because that's not God's plan for your victory. That's, that's the plan that they used in their last battle. That's the counsel that someone gave them 15 years ago. That's the understanding that they have and the revelation that they've stepped into for their life or for their season. When David went to battle Goliath, Saul said, here, put on my armor and take my, my, my weaponry. And David put it on and it was like way too big for him. It didn't fit. And he didn't want to offend Saul. He said, I can't wear this because I haven't tested it. I believe he already had a strategy. I believe David already had a strategy to defeat Goliath. And if he had tried to do it Saul's way, he might have been the one who lost his head. Because he couldn't maneuver. He couldn't operate in those constraints. David couldn't move. He couldn't flow. He couldn't do what he needed to do. He couldn't move in another person's anointing. And neither can you. David chose to go to the battle line with a customized weapon, a weapon that he was used to. He didn't need a new weapon. The old one worked just fine. See, some of you, I see that. Some of you think you need a new weapon when the one God's put in your hand is fine. God asked Moses when he was standing at the, at the edge of the Red Sea with the Egyptian army behind him and an impossibility in front of him. God said, what is in your hand? And it was a staff. He said, put forth your staff into the water and it part of the Red Sea. That was a weapon. That was a weapon to Moses. He didn't use it to beat them off in the physical, in the natural. He didn't take his staff and say, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to knock you out one by one. That would have taken all day, all night, days and days. No, God can use what's in your hand. God can use what's in your mouth. God can use what's in your heart as a weapon against the enemy. It's about steadfastness. It's about endurance. It's about standing strong. There's new weapons in the floodgate. There's old weapons in the floodgate that you left behind. You used to fight a certain way and you saw results, but somehow you got into this season where everybody wanted to tell you, well, no, with this battle, you got to do it this way. And everything you learned and everything that worked, you set it aside to follow the advice of somebody else. Listen, you know who the best warrior in the world is? You know who the greatest warrior in the world is? The Lord Jesus Christ. He is the captain of the hosts. Father, help us today to receive the weapon where you have for us in the floor. Lord, we don't want somebody else's weapon. We don't want David's sling and stone if that's not what's going to win a battle in this season. 
We don't want Saul's armor if that's not what's going to win the battle in this season. We don't want Goliath's sword if that's not what's going to work in the battle this season. Lord, help us to pick up the right weapon for the right battle. I just saw it again. There's just this like, it's not a treasure chest. I guess it's a war chest. I called it a treasure chest. That's what it reminded me of because it was gold and spark like gold. It, how, what, gold plated? Is that what you call it? Gold? It was just, it, it's probably just pure gold because it's from the Lord. It's probably just gold through and through. But it was gold and ornate on the outside. It looks like a treasure chest, except it's a war chest. But to you, it's a treasure chest. Because when you pick up the weapon in that chest, in that war chest, you're going to re, you're going to regain the treasures the devil told, stole from you. From some of you, it's money. From some of you, it's time. For some of you, it's relationships. Whatever it is. There's weapons in the floodgate. Ah. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to look at the warfare differently. Hmm. Help us, Lord, to look at the warfare differently. Help us, Lord, to look at the warfare differently so we can discern the right weapon instead of using the same old weapons and getting the same old results, which is... which is less than full victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what's going on with this periscope. Dear God. <laughs> Lord, help us to pick up the weapons that you have ordained for us for the battle that's before us. These weapons in the floodgate. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The weapons of our war. Remember, they're not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. He is your shield and he is your buckler. He is your shield and he is your buckler. He's your small shield and your large shield. When you follow the Holy Spirit into battle, you will not lose. Paul said in 2 Corinthians, Thanks be to God, who always causes me to triumph in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. Thanksgiving is a weapon for some of you. Some of you have a tendency to get in warfare and complain and shout and cry and moan and groan and squall and bawl. And the Lord is saying, try thanksgiving as a weapon. <laughs> oh, I just hit a nerve. I just hit a nerve. I just hit a nerve. Did I just hit a nerve? <laughs> thanksgiving is a weapon. Amen. God is good. God is good. London, stay with me. I have an announcement. London, please don't hang up or come back and listen later. As a matter of fact, London, go to jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com now. Listen, I want to give you an opportunity to sew today. I'm going to tap into this beginning part. I should have probably just turned the whole call into that, and I just felt I felt like I needed to, to be wise and not keep pressing on that provision button because there's something else the Lord wants to show me and it's going to require some study. So it might be next week before I pick that back up, but there's something there. I've got to go back and listen to the call. I was getting revelation, but I knew there was more. Sometimes it's wise, especially if you're, you know, dealing with a million people that are going to listen to a broadcast to make sure that you don't speak out of order, that you don't speak just from what you know, from what you've learned, but from what you're learning and what you will learn when you sit before the Lord. There's something more on that. I'm going to press into that. It'll probably be next week because I'm traveling through California and I'll be home on Tuesday night. Amen. I'll be home on Tuesday night. I'll be home on Tuesday night. I'll be leaving for California on Saturday afternoon. Listen, I want to give you a chance to sow into this broadcast today. Sow into your new weapon. Praise God. You can't buy it, but you can sow into it. You can sow into this concept, this revelation is what I'm saying. Because I know some pirate Christian, you know, is going to quote me and they're probably listening now. And you must be miserable, but we're praying for you. Praise God. 
Hallelujah. You can sow into this, into this ministry and help me take this message further. And the other messages that I carry, the warfare message, I tell you, I'm here at the, uh, the Global Prophetic Summit, and I've had just, you know, leaders of movements come to me asking me for advice on, on, on Jezebel and on warfare and different leaders and nations saying, we need you. I've learned what I know about spiritual warfare from you, and I need you to come because we need reinforcements. So listen, there's a battle at hand, and the battle's going to continue to rage. And, and these places, some of these people, you know, some of these nations, these leaders, they've got the only house of prayer in a nation. They've got the only apostolic training center. They've got the only prophetic church in their, in their region or in their nation. And they need help. They need help from people such as myself and others that, that carry the revelation that their nation needs that they've never heard or that they've rejected in the past. Help me, help me to get there, would you? You can sow into missions at jenniferleclair.org slash missions. I've got big plans for that in the next year, waiting on the Lord to release that, waiting on the, the right people to come along. But big plans for missions. JenniferLeClaire.org slash missions, you want to sow into that. You can just sow a seed, though, at JenniferLeClaire.org slash give. JenniferLeClaire.org slash give. You can become a partner there. You can sow a one-time seed there. JenniferLeClaire.org slash give. All the other ways to sow are listed on that site. You can use the text to give, 754-701-2161. Text the word pray. 754-701-2161. Seven five four seven zero one two one six one. Text the word pray. You can use the cash app. Dollar sign Jennifer Leclaire. Cash app dollar sign Jennifer Leclaire. Are we having a fight over here on Facebook. Are we having a fight on Facebook over here? You guys arguing on Facebook? Hallelujah. Cash app, dollar sign, Jennifer LeClaire. Dollar sign, Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. Periscope cut off. I couldn't tell what was going on. P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33303. That's the second time in two days Periscope has cut off. I tried the audio. I tried connecting it to my phone instead of the Wi-Fi. Periscope has demons. Amen. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. PayPal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. Hallelujah. And I think that's it. Praise God. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to give, to spread your word to the nations of the earth, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry in nations where they don't understand a thing about warfare, where they've rejected it as, as, as unnecessary. Father, I give you praise and honor and glory for this seed. I thank you, Lord, that, that we're sowing into revelation of new weapons so that we can stop doing the things we've always done the way we've always done them and getting the same results we've always had, which is less than your perfect will for our lives. Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory for who you are. I ask you to multiply this seed back to the givers in Jesus' name. Help them, Lord, to see what they can't see. Because we don't know what we don't know. Help them to see what they can't see. Because we don't know what we don't know. Help them to see what they can't see. Help them to see the provision behind the bush, the oasis in the desert. Help them to see. Help them to see what they can't see. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I lift up all my Awakening Blaze prayer leaders, my Ignite Network members, all those who are aligned with me, all the AHOP churches that are springing up around the world, Awakening House of Prayer, all of, all of this community, this family that we're building, my staff, my volunteers, all my givers, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to stand and withstand with them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Bless them indeed. Enlarge their territory. Let your hand of power be upon them and keep them from evil in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. London, I need your help. I am having a special prophetic prayer call for London. I need you to get on this with me. I want to share and cast vision 
of what the Lord has put on my heart from London. I've received a prophetic confirmation about London. You know, I'm like 94% British. Did you know that? <laughs> I'm my, my, uh, my heritage. Not, not, that, not that long back either. Not like 10 generations back, like recent. Hallelujah. And so I've got a special heart for London. I've been praying and pressing about various different things and was stalled and stymied by advice of certain people that maybe didn't want to see me, uh, uh, you know, pray there. Uh, but we're going to move forward and we're going to have this prayer call. So I'm asking you, if you're in London, you know somebody that's in London, or if you just want to pray for London, that's fine too. Please go and sign up for this prayer call. I'm going to send out an international number where you can dial in internationally. You don't have to be in London. If you have a heart for London, you can pray. But I'm really trying to reach those in London that have authority because you're on the ground. So I really want you to get on this call. If you know somebody that is in London, hello, Celia. Go to jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. We're going to be doing a call, a prayer call on November the 29th. That is in just, a, that's just shy of two weeks. Go sign up for that. Amen. You'll find all kinds of stuff at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. It's going to be at two o'clock in the afternoon, America time, 7 p.m. London time. You'll find all kinds of stuff at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. Amen. All kinds of stuff there for you. All kinds of issues there for you to, 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 to look through, to, to bless you. You'll also find free stuff at schoolofthespirit.tv. Hopefully we'll build that catalog and be offering more free stuff soon. It's a matter of time, bandwidth, the ability to, uh, you know, my IT guy had to hire another person just to keep up with all the, all the work. So, you know, he's got a new staffer and she's getting a couple new staffers and they're getting all set up to, to plow harder and move faster. Amen. But God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. They still can't keep up yet, but hopefully they'll, they'll keep pace. Sometimes they get ahead of me. But go there to jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. Listen, the Ascend Conference. You, if you cannot come to, to the Ascend Conference with James Gall, Jonathan Ferguson, myself, the, and Jonathan Stidham, then you need to go and get the online ticket. There is an online ticket. It does cost money for an online ticket. Why? Because it does. It costs money. It costs us money to do it. So, but it's a lot cheaper than for you traveling all over the United States trying to get here. So if you just can't get the time off work, if you just can't you know, afford the plane ticket, go sign up for the online ticket. If you have already registered, there is a VIP option. There's prophecy rooms. There's VIP panels uh, where you get to ask questions. There's, there's classes in the day. If you've just signed up for the regular uh, free admission, that's cool. But there's a lot more there for you, and I think you're probably going to want to take advantage of that. And there is a price for that premium ticket. But the general admission is free. It's uh, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, December 6th, 7th, and 8th. You're going to want to get involved in this if you possibly can. I've made it easy. You can watch online. You can get the MP3s. You can do whatever it is that's going to bless you. But just get involved. Amen? Get involved. Get involved. Get involved. Get involved if it's going to bless you. Not get, this is, the Lord told me that it's time for the seers to soar. It's time for the prophetic people to ascend. And so there's going to be a heavy emphasis on calling you up higher. I was just... Uh, here uh, a couple of days ago with Bishop Hammond, he prayed impartation and activation for all of us to come up to the next level of the prophetic, prophetic 2.0, the next phase of the prophetic. And so I'm carrying something that I want to release. Hello, Benjamin. I'm carrying something that I want to release. Go get signed up. Go get registered. JenniferLeClaire.eventbrite.com. Amen. I think those were the main things. There's always more to say, but listen, I want you to get on my mailing list, please, so that you can get uh, the emails. They're, they've almost, they're people, some people are getting duplicates. They've almost, they've almost settled that any day now, any day now, praise God. Awakening Blaze prayer movement, join the movement, awakeningblaze.com. God is good. Ignite Network. The Ignite Network, ignitenow.org. We have the Spiritual Warfare Battalion, the Apostolic Voices. All of these things there for you. Go check that out, ignitenow.org. God is good. I think that's it. Am I forgetting anything? I don't know why Periscope keeps cutting off. 
Get on that mailing list, would you? Get on that mailing list. That way I can keep in touch with you. First time on live web. Thank you for being here. Amen. Thank you. Get on my mailing list, jenniferleclair.org. Hello, Daisy. She's awesome. Bless you. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Have a great day.